Welcome to Holy Spirit Lutheran Church, and we are celebrating the name of Jesus and a carol sing for December 26th. Our opening hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice. We together say our dialogue, and you should have the words to follow. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light is shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when dividing plunder. For a child has been born, for us a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. All powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God Almighty, we ask your blessing upon Ruth as she reads to us the scriptures. May the words of her mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The first reading is from Numbers, the sixth chapter. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. We join together in our gospel acclamation, Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In this part of our service, we have our hymn sing with two of our Christmas hymns and their stories. So the first is Lo, how a rose air blooming. And we will sing the hymn after we hear about the hymn's history. The hymn's origins may be traced back to the late 16th century in a manuscript found in St. Albans Carthusian Monastery in Trier and in the original German Es ist ein Ross entsprungen. The original stanzas, which sources list at least 19 and as many as 23, focused on the events of Luke 1 and 2 and Matthew 2. The origin of the image of the rose has been open to much speculation. For example, an apocryphal legend has it that on Christmas Eve, a monk in Trier found a blooming rose while walking in the woods, and place the rose in a vase on an altar to the Virgin Mary. Some Catholic sources claim the focus of the hymn was originally upon Mary, who's compared to the symbol of the mystical rose in Song of Solomon 2, 1. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. It has been suggested that in a later date, Protestants took the hymn and altered its focus from Mary to Jesus, citing Isaiah 11.1, 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow from its roots. Now there's some controversy over the original German word in the first line of the stanza. Was it Ross, which means rose, or Ries, which means branch? Now a third passage from Isaiah 35 suggests a stronger biblical basis for the image. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. The image of the rose has had amazing resilience over the centuries. In an icon from Greece, Anna, the, Mary, the mother of Mary, is dressed in green and is the larger figure. Her daughter Mary is seated in front of her in red. At first, it appears that the figure of Jesus, so common with images of Mary, is not present. But then upon closer examination, one notices Mary is holding a flower, Isaiah's promise fulfilled. The famous composer Michael Pretorius, who lived from 1571 to 1621, helped the popularity of this tune immensely by harmonizing it in his collection. Zion's music in 1609. His harmonization of this German tune or adaptations of it may be found in most hymnals. So now join with me in singing Lo, How a Rose, Air Blooming.
Our second hymn is Angels from the Realms of Glory. Now, James Montgomery, 1771 to 1854, followed in the footsteps of two poetic luminaries, Isaac Watts and Charles Wesley. In many hymnals, he is well representative, third only to Watts and Wesley for British hymn writers before 1850. Montgomery's father, father was a minister and his parents served later as missionaries in the West Indies. He began writing poetry at the age of 10, inspired by the hymns of the Moravians, the same group that influenced John Wesley. Although he flunked out of school at age 14, Montgomery found a job in 1792 at a radical weekly newspaper, the Sheffield Register. He assumed the leadership of the paper when the previous editor, due to his politics, had to flee the country for fear of persecution. Montgomery then changed the name of the paper to the Sheffield Iris and served 31 years as its editor. Angels from the Realms of Glory was first published on Christmas Eve 1816 in the Sheffield Iris. The hymn has a sense of urgency and excitement, magnified by the use of imperative verbs throughout, especially in the refrain, come and worship. Now, the original final stanza is usually omitted in hymnals. Sinners wrung with true repentance, doomed for guilt to endless pains. Justice now revokes your sentence. Mercy calls you, break your chains. Now, while such language seems harsh to modern ears and seems to end a Christmas hymn such as this on a bit of a downer, it completes a thoughtful progression from the first to last stanzas. Stanza one is the angel song. Two, shepherd's adoration. Three, sages or wise men's gifts. And then the fourth is the saints, and then the fifth would be the sinners, repentance. Mr. Watson points out the final original stanza appealing to the sinners is highly appropriate because it echoes the psalm for Christmas morning, Psalm 85, especially verse 10. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The themes of justice and mercy, as well as image of broken chains, are also appropriate in the context of the poet's life. His newspaper denounced the social evils of his day, especially the slave trade. Montgomery was even jailed for his radical views, once for publishing a poem that celebrated the fall of the Bastille, and another denouncing actions of the Sheffield police during a riot. He used the time he had in prison to write poetry. And even though the original final stanza may seem to put a damper on unbridled Christmas joy, Montgomery reminds us the nativity was more than a sweet manger scene. As many texts from Isaiah and the prophets remind us, the incarnation was an event celebrating the liberation of oppressed peoples by a just and merciful God taking on human form. Join now in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Together we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we will have prayers that focus mainly on this day and season as we are in the Christmas season. Our gracious God, Emmanuel, God with us, God for us, God among us. You are the wondrous gift of life and light to all people. And you have come to us as a child, a baby. We gather to peer down into the manger and gaze into the unbelievable. Yes, it is unbelievable that you, maker of heaven and earth, would enter the world like this. That you, savior of all, would have a feed box for a cradle. That you, God of all time and space, would put on this innocence, this helplessness. Yet you did, and we love you for it. Yet you yourself knew a world not unlike ours, filled with beauty and aching need. In the eyes of this Christ child, we see glimmers of what is to come. We see him slipping away from his parents to sit in the synagogue. We see him rubbing clay into the eyes of a blind man so he can see. We hear him uttering words of grace. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Rise and walk. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I will be with you always. All this goodness, all this meaning and possibility lies nestled in a manger. We gather together to thank you, praise you, and invite you into the cradle of our heart to abide now and always. Abide with us, O Christ child. Abide with us, Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We close with the hymn, Go, Tell It On the Mountain. 